students already uh, we are started uh, the topic research in mass communication right so here today the second part uh, we are discussing about the uh, selection of the topic selection uh, of the topic hope you are all watched the first video after that uh, the uh, let's discuss about just let's discuss about the selection of the topic so this is the step 1 okay the topic selected for research must be thought over carefully keeping uh, keeping some aspects in mind so what are the aspects that is the first one is relevance the topic must hold relevance in the existing scenario its significance is a crucial aspect when starting the research there are topics upon which immense research are done like effects of violence in movies on children or celebrity endorsements in advertising this research on such topics would then uh, make sense and instead doing research on current and new topics would be helpful and the second one is feasibility feasibility selecting of uh, a topic of for research is its feasibility which means uh, whether the research would be accomplished during the time period set or for that matter despite many other physical constraints like being uh for example being located in kashmir it would not be feasible enough to do research on the coverage of tsunami in tamil nadu or andaman broadness okay and uh, the next one is uh broadness depending upon the purpose of research product uh, sorry research project the broadness of the topic is desired Uh, for instance if you reach a topic for research which is online advertising it is way too broad to do research depending upon whether the research is a minor project or a major project the topic is crystallized and decided okay and the fourth one is time and cost constraints okay time and cost are important aspects to think of when selecting a topic to research so these are the four aspects for the uh, keeping carefully for the selection of the topic okay so let's discuss about the retrieving information and review review so we selected the topic after deciding the topic of research and in depth reading of the text related to the topic follows then uh, we review the literature as done on the topic chosen for the research for uh, proper understanding of the topic and the already done research on the topic there are different types of information sources that can be scanned to get required information so information sources these include scholarly research journals books magazines newspapers encyclopedia handbooks blogs websites internet etc etc all the information sources must be cited properly and proper citations to the information must be given so um you must be kept in mind before going ahead um the first one is types of previous research in the similar area so first we have to uh, understand the types of previous research of the same topic okay previous research in the same area and the second one is results and uh, conclusions of previous studies already some scientists discussed about or research about that topic so you have to go through the results and conclusions uh, that they find out and uh, the third one is uh, suggestions by uh, researchers uh, and they suggest something about that topic right suggestions by researchers uh, for future studies and uh, 
Uh, fourth one is some aspects that have not been some aspects that have not been investigated. So we have to find that uh, aspects, right? So uh, the contribution of the proposed study to the knowledge of that area of research methods that were used earlier. So uh, these are the things must be kept in mind before going ahead. So here, uh, let's starting uh, or let's discuss about the stating hypothesis and research questions and uh, what are the objectives. Hypothesis and research questions or objectives are framed, keeping in mind the topic of research. A hypothesis are already mentioned as a formal statement that has not been tested yet. So, uh, uh, what we'll say? Uham, uham in the way. Okay, uham. So, I'm going to say that I'm going to say that So, uh, a hypothesis is already a formal statement. If you have a formal statement, a formal statement that has not been tested yet. Okay, it has not been tested yet. That is a um, hypothesis and the predicted relationship between the variables is either true or false. While a research question is a formally stated question that provides indications about something. Unlike hypothesis, it is not limited to investigating um, relationships between variables. Okay, so Let's discuss about the preparation of research. Research designs means the conceptual structure with which a research study is conducted. Depending upon the purposes of research, research design is prepared, which results in getting maximum information and evidence in less time, money and effort. Now, so the next, uh, first one is exploratory design. Exploratory design. Exploratory design involves exploring the new concepts, new concepts and uh, new theories, digging deep into the problem to reach a particular conclusion. In this design, many aspects of the problem are to be considered and a flexible research design, design is to be formed. And the second one is descriptive design. Descriptive design. It involves the description of a problem or an event. The design must minimize the biases and maximize the reliability of data collected and analyzed. And next one is diagnostic design. Diagnostic design. This type of research design takes a small sample and studies it on the basis of several parameters. Okay, causes and factors here. Checking about the causes factors uh, etc and the fourth one is experiment experimental design it can be informal or formal informal or formal designs and involves huge amount of money uh, for the lab uh, this is the most uh, difficult type of research design to be practiced. That is experimental design. So, let's go through the research methodology versus research methods. So, methodology versus methods. The words methodology and methods are often confused with each other. Methodology, it is a study of methods methodology, a study of uh, methods and the groundwork of the philosophical assumption of the research process itself. Different research questions will have different methodologies. If a researcher is interested in how the internet is affecting the copyright laws, he or she would probably choose the methodology of legal research. If a researcher wants to trace how radio programming Radio programming has evolved since the introduction of TV. He may choose historical methodology, right? So, a study about the effect of television on children may use scientific methodology. In short, methodology with the, uh, deals with the question, why? Why to do research in a certain way? 
In contrast, what is a method? A method, it's a, it's a way. It's a specific technique to collect and gather information following the assumption of the chosen research methodology. Okay, so this is the difference between a methodology and a method. So there are lots of research methods. What are the methods we are used for the research? That is, first one is survey method. You, saw, you already know what is a survey. The literal meaning of word survey is to look at or study something carefully. That's all. And uh, there is a type, there is some types of surveys. What are the types? General or specific survey. The first one is general or specific, and the second one is regular and HOC surveys. HOC surveys, and the third one is preliminary and final final surveys. Then uh, you already know about census and opinion polls that. But also, you know, what is opinion polls and exit polls. So here, uh, let's discuss some. Uh, in survey method, the data is collected through tools such as questionnaire, schedule, or interviews. A set of questions are framed according to the objectives of the research. So the question can be open-ended question. Open-ended question. Open-ended questions like give respondents from... Um, or freedom in answering questions and an opportunity to provide in-depth responses. So um, there is some disadvantage. The uh, disadvantage of this open-ended questions is that the answers require large amount of time to collect and analyze the responses. And uh, the next one is closed-ended questions. Closed-ended. In these questions, respondents have to choose to reply from the list provided by the researcher. And because of the greater standardization of the questions, it is easy to collect the responses and the answers can be easily quantified. The major disadvantage is that often certain responses are not included in the options as a solution to this problem. Okay, uh, that is like we used the word other. Okay, other. And uh, the next one is mixed questions. Mixed questions. These are a combination of both open-ended and closed-ended. That is uh, mixed. Okay. Next method is observation method. We talk about survey method. And the second one is observation method. The types of observations are controlled, controlled, uncontrolled, Participant, participant, non-participant, non-participant, case study method, case study method. So these are the observation methods. Observation is the perception with a purpose. It is the process of acquiring knowledge through the use of sense organs. According to P.V. Young, case study, it is a method of exploring and analyzing the life of a unit, um, be that a person. So uh, the next one is content analysis. Content analysis. It is a research technique for the objective systematic and quantitative description of the manifest content of communication. It is a systematic way of analysis and a description of what? Of the content of communication media. It's very easy. And there are some steps in content analysis. The steps are, first we have to formulate the research questions or hypothesis and we have to defining the universe then selecting an appropriate uh, sample from the population, then selecting and defining a unit of analysis and uh, constructing uh, categories and after training coders and conducting a pilot study and establishing a quantification system and after coding of the content uh, and analyze the collected data and uh, last drawing conclusions and searching for indications and the last one is historical method and there is no need of explanation of these topics 
so that's why i'm just skipping uh, historical method is past knowledge is considered to be a pre present knowledge uh, and so far as anything has an anticipated history and uh, natural development okay so these are the types of methods and next uh, we have to understand what is data one of the goals of scientific research in science that believes in the notion of positivism is it that a researcher needs to describe the nature of phenomena there is group or class of variables so there are two broad types of error present in all research what are the error that is sampling error and the next one is non sampling error sampling is the error related to the selection of a sample from a population selection of a sample from a population and non sampling is the error created by the aspects of a research study like data analysis errors measurement errors influence of the research situation itself or even error from an unknown source that can never be identified controlled or eliminated so uh, these are the two types of error okay in certain research studies uh, the process of examining every member in a population that is called census studying every member of a population is costly and at times not feasible thus to go ahead with the study a sample is taken from the solution so the selection of a sample and if there is a chance to be some error sampling error okay it is a sample is a subset of the population and represents the entire population even though it has appropriate size it is inadequate for testing purposes because the results can be generalized to the entire population from where sample was drawn thus the whole purpose of so the most uh, uh, controversial aspect regarding sampling is to determine the adequate sample size sample selection depends on the some factors that is purpose why we are selecting that sample complexity of project complexity of project and the next one is amount of error tolerate amount of error tolerated and the next one is constraints involved constraints involved and financial constraints financial constraints and previous studies on the topic previous studies on the topic so these are the factors that uh, depends on why we selecting the sample okay next area of study the researcher to be contacted has a specific area of study that can be based on the topic location of the researcher and so on from this area a particular sample is a collected from the entire population using a suitable sampling technique so next we have to we are discussing about the sampling techniques sampling is an important part of all research which is often misunderstood by beginners in research a sample is collected from the universe or a population and if uh, selected correctly it can represent the characteristics opinions attitudes of the entire population so what are the sampling techniques then that is now we are uh, explain about the sampling techniques okay so the first one is non probability non probability sampling second one or a purposive sampling and probability or random sampling probability or random sampling and uh, 
stratified sampling stratified stratified sampling and next one is quota sampling quota sampling and cluster sampling cluster sampling and multi stage sampling multi stage sampling questionnaire questionnaire interviews interviews etc so these are the sampling techniques we are using for uh, while we selecting the sampling while uh, we are selecting the sample for non probability sampling that is random stratified quota cluster so uh, in next class we will discuss about the sampling techniques and after uh, data analysis and representation okay thank you